This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the efficiency of energy transfers. No energy transfer is 100% efficient. Some energy is always degraded as heat is transferred to the surroundings. Degraded energy is energy that is no longer able to do work. Efficiency is calculated by dividing the useful output energy by the total input energy and multiplying by 100. This gives a percentage efficiency. A process is more efficient if it transfers a greater percentage of the total input energy to the useful output energy required. Next we look at the efficiency of a coal-fired power station. In a coal-fired power station, coal is burned to produce heat. The heat released boils water to produce steam. The steam turns a turbine, which turns a generator which generates electricity. A coal-fired power station has an efficiency of approximately 35 to 40 percent. This is because at each stage energy is degraded as heat is transferred to the surroundings. Let's look at an example. A coal-fired power station has an energy output of 1.73 times 10 to the 16 joules of electrical energy per year. The total amount of input energy required to generate this amount is 4.82 times 10 to the 16 joules. Calculate the efficiency of the power station. So the efficiency is equal to the useful output energy divided by the total input energy multiplied by 100. So our useful output energy is 1.73 times 10 to the 16. Our total input energy is 4.82 times 10 to the 16. This gives us an efficiency of 35.9%. Next, we'll calculate the mass of coal required to produce this amount of heat energy. Assume that coal has the same standard enthalpy change of combustion as graphite, which is negative 398 kilojoules per mole. So first, we'll convert the total input energy from joules to kilojoules by dividing by 1000. If we look at the value for the standard enthalpy change of combustion, this tells us that one mole of carbon releases 394 kilojoules of heat energy. So next, we divide the total input energy by the energy released by one mole of carbon, which gives us 1.22 times 10 to the 11 moles of carbon. And finally, we multiply the moles of carbon by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01, which gives us 1.47 times 10 to the 12 grams, or 1.47 times 10 to the 9 kilograms. So that's all from this video. In the next video, we look at the formation of fossil fuels.